Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thanks for joining. If you are wondering why the stock markets always swing so wildly when important news comes out, why they move in one direction first, but not into the other, and how you can identify the exact pivot points for a safe and profitable entry. One thing is for sure, as a retail trader who is using candlestick charts, you are as blind as a bat, and I hope to show this to you here. You need to switch on your ultrasound viewing mode, otherwise you will never have a chance competing against the professionals. Hi, I am a former investment banker and Wall Street veteran with a wealth of experience to share with you. On this channel, I provide insights on investing, recent events, and geopolitics to assist you with escaping the madness that has now become our new reality. So we have this all the time with important news coming out that the stock markets make wild swings in what appears random directions and often these moves are fake, meaning that after that initial move, the stock market turns around to just go exactly into the opposite direction. Why is that so? Well, to better understand this situation, let's look on a typical Fed interest rate decision day as we have it here running. First, we look at it with a normal candlestick chart on what happens about 10 minutes before the news regarding the Fed's interest rate decision comes out. Did you see anything? I did not see much, honestly. Let's switch on our X-ray view of the market. Maybe this tells us more. Here we go. The different lines show the volume of orders that are in the order book. Until this point are the currently active ones and towards the left are the historical orders. Black to blue means little volume, yellow to red means high volume. So this information tells us exactly what is going on in the market. With candlesticks, volume profiles, or moving averages you always only have the historical view on where orders were executed in the past. But with this full order book view you actually see in real time everything that is going on. And that is absolutely crucial these days if you want today trade profitable. So coming back to the Fed day, what we can see here about 10 minutes before the news announcement is that most of the orders in the market are getting pulled. People are expecting large moves and therefore they are taking their limit orders out of the market to avoid being caught up on the wrong side. This means there is a lot less liquidity in the market which enables the market to do these wild swings when the news come out. Because there are just not so many buyers or sellers present. Now let's look at the next market phase when the news comes out. Again we start with the candlesticks only version. So here we go, the market makes a quick swing up to 42.40, crossing the VWAP before reverting back down to 42.23. After that we have an even larger move to 42.47 before crashing down to 42.21, and then the rally upward starts. Now again, we use the full order book view to analyze what has happened here. So the first thing we see is that we have basically two bands of liquidity here. We have quite large buy orders down at 42.20, and some smaller orders up at 4240. There is practically nothing in between. After the market moved up to the VWAP, there is some liquidity coming in at 4233 and then 4236. So as the market is already very close to the sitting selling liquidity at 4240, it goes up towards that direction first with additional liquidity coming in at 4237 here. Just as a side note here, the colors in the heat map represent limit orders. The market orders which then drive the market price are not visible in the heat map as they are executed immediately. But you can see them on the right side here as volume and I have some proprietary indicators in use which highlight imbalances between the buy and sell side, but I am not showing them here at the moment. Anyways as we can see here on the right, the volume is still very low. The liquidity at 4240 is also not much. Only up at 4245 is the next larger bucket of sell orders. So looks like the buyers are exhausted. We could not quite make it up there and the market is going down now. Okay, now we are getting closer to the lower band of the consolidation phase here and the waiting buy limit orders at 4220. Well, it did not quite get there yet, it is moving up again. At 4245 is again a larger bucket of liquidity which we have consumed now and we are falling sharply back down. The overall volumes have already increased, and we are getting now back down to 42.20 in the market, which we could not quite reach the last time we came down here. And here we have a couple of bites from that liquidity. Looks like that a lot more buyers coming in at this level, not only from the visible limit orders but market orders as well, now dragging the market back up. As we can see here, there are a lot of orders above the previous high at 42.50. Will we have enough momentum now to break through this or will we revert back down from there? Well, we went through this like a hot knife through butter. More limit orders have now come in at 4260. Will this be the next level to go to? It is now nearly market closure, but we are consolidating here and slowly move up higher through that 4260 level as well. So what can we learn from this? 
Well, the first thing is that just a candlestick chart on its own does not tell us much about where orders are sitting and where pivot points would be. We can assume that there are always some order around previous highs and lows, but we don't really know. The professionals do see these things so they can perfectly navigate within these ranges. And secondly, the ranges are defined by large blocks of limit orders which the market first has to consume before it can move through them. Very often the market does not fully touch them when it approaches so it reverts back first into the direction it came from. Or they quickly break through that band of liquidity to then just turn around instantly with big momentum. That kind of move is what we would associate with the hunting of stops which can also be made visible with this software. This price action can then either result in a complete trend change or an interim consolidation. So the professionals know exactly where the market will experience difficulties to break through and the ranges it will most likely move within until it finally manages to break out. These are a lot of advantages that they can use while we as retail traders just stumble through the price levels like a blind bat. This is why they win and you lose. The software I use here is called Bookmap. Considering to what it does, it is quite cheap actually. I am not affiliated with it but have been using it pretty much forever as it is the next level of advancement to pure price ladder trading what I was used to do for my time as a market maker and later at the banks. Now most of this trading is done by automated algorithms so if you want to survive as a trader you have to employ every edge you can get otherwise you have no freaking chance to win. Anyways that's it for today. Maybe I am totally wrong with this. If you think so or if you think that my conclusions are sensible then please share your views in the comments below. Hope to welcome you as a new subscriber. If you found this video insightful, please give it a like and share it. Thank you very much for watching and all the very best to you.